Hey guys, hi, welcome back once again. And yes, I do know that this video has been delayed by a day because for some weird rhyme or reason when I got up this morning, I happened to think that it was a Sunday morning today and I was kind of glad that it is my day when I'll be posting the video only to realize that it was a Monday morning in India over here. And even when I thought of that, I kind of had this another thought which made me realize that again, Sunday and Monday were relative aspects to me understanding a certain aspect about myself and my reality. And somewhere out on this planet, there was a Sunday happening somewhere. And that Monday was also coming to a closure somewhere. And so it all made sense in a very random, weird way that yes, Sunday is out there somewhere and that Monday is coming to a closure and that for me, I am experiencing a different aspect of Monday or a different aspect of Sunday and then it is all okay. So here I today want to talk about reality. Reality that may be a construct. Reality that may be a download. Reality that may be a perception and reality that may essentially be a conditioning. And yes, it does sound a little constrictive, it does sound limiting and yes, it is uneasy. But then maybe think about it, maybe the reality that we all assume our reality to be may be just a construct. It may be a conditioned process also. It just might be our conditioning to accept our realities in certain ways, in certain knowns and certain unknowns. In uncertain knowns and in uncertain unknowns. And those unknown uncertains are really scary for most of us. And yet at the same time, certain specific known certains are also scary because they kind of limit our definition of the reality that we experience the reality to be. And does it sound confusing? Well, it's not really that confusing. So let us take up a few examples to understand or to even try and comprehend as to how our reality might be just more of a construct, might be a programming that has been downloaded into all of us. It just might be too limiting, a conditioned reality. So let us take up this example over here of this fabric. Now, if you see these three different colors, we have a certain kind of a green, which I am assuming it to be a green. So this, in my understanding and the language that I'm speaking right now should be a green. It should be defined and categorized as some sort of a green. Now, some might argue that this is a little muddy green. Some might argue that it is an olive green. Some might argue that it has a tinge of black to it. And some might argue it has a tinge of gold to it. So that's again everybody's perception of their own reality. But this essentially in the English language is green. But then let us take up these two colors. Is it a blue or is this a blue? Is this a green or is this a green? Is this a bluish green or is this a bluish green? And is this a greenish blue or is this a greenish blue? Can't really say, can be. And when I dived into this topic a little further, I happened to come across a video when I came to realize that the color blue in itself is a relatively new concept, a new addition in the English language that we all speak today or that, that at least most of us speak today or most of us do understand today. So blue in essence is a relatively newer color. It's something that we identify as blue. 
it is our reality of what color blue might be like and we can have all hues and shades of that all tints and shades of that and yet there are languages which are older than the English language which do not have the concept of blue which do not have the blue color in their dictionary and blue for them is just another variant of the color green it's just a little variation of the color green they don't have blue in their dictionary so they do not recognize blue as a different color and there is this tribe in namibia wherein a particular experiment was done on their on them wherein a certain spectrum of green color was given to them was placed in front of them and there was an addition of this particular blue in all of the greens that was placed before them and they were asked to choose the blue color which they could not because they do not have the identity of the blue color and yet when I saw that I was able to identify the blue color because I understand I have the know-how of the color blue in English language and yet at the same time when those people were given a whole spectrum of similar looking green color and they were asked to identify one that was a little dissimilar to the others they were easily able to pick out the green that was a little different and yet when I looked at those colors or even most English speaking people were asked to do that they were not able to identify that particular color of green which stood out for the tribe in Namibia and isn't that fascinating isn't that absolutely brilliant that a certain tribe has no identity of the color blue and that is why even when it is placed before them they are not able to identify it and yet when similar looking green colors are placed before them and they are asked to identify one that is slightly dissimilar they are able to identify that and we are not able to do it so let us take up a few more examples let us go back a few years in time which again is a relative concept but nonetheless do that so when this entire globalization process had still not happened and when we were kind of unfamiliar with even some of the vegetables like broccoli, like bok choy, like avocados. Say somebody was to come to us from a far distant land where we had never been before. And somebody was to ask us to make an avocado spread. We probably would end up wondering what this fellow is talking about. What is an avocado? Is there something called as an avocado in the first place? Or some would even think that this person is nuts. There is nothing called as avocado. Or if somebody was to come and tell us to make a bok choy and a broccoli soup, we would say, what? Brok, brok, brok what? Choy what? Probably we would end up something like that. We wouldn't know what a broccoli is. In fact, even today, most people would not be aware of what a broccoli is most people would not be aware of what an avocado is all about most people would not know that there is something called as a purple cabbage which can be used for exotic salads most people would not know that a pasta exists we didn't know it a few years back we didn't know it a couple of decades back and today we are comfortable with it and since we did not know about it since we did not know about it we did not have a language for it or maybe we never had a language for it and that's why we did not know about it or it both is intertwined so then again 
think of it that if there is a particular tribe that doesn't recognize the color blue because it's not in their dictionary, they don't even see that color. So had we never seen the broccoli or had we never seen an avocado in our life or had we never seen an olive in our life, we would not know what an olive was all about. We would not know what a broccoli was all about. We would not know what an avocado was all about. Some people would know, most would not. And then let us take this a step further. So now let us really think about it. Our language defines our identities. Is It gives us a certain thing that we identify with. But at the same time, it also limits our perception to that. Maybe it identifies itself too much or we identify with those identities, even with regards to ourselves, so much that we truly get defined in a box and we don't really understand our own expansiveness. We don't really understand our own beautiful, fantastic complexities. And yes, we ourselves might be strangers to ourselves most of the times because we have not really thought beyond our conditioned identities, beyond our conditioned realities. What if we were taught that something if that is good, if that was taught to us that this thing is good and that this thing is bad, what if we were also given the liberty to think of the opposite? What if we were taught also and asked to think of what is good as also not being good and what is bad as essentially not being bad? But what if we were taught to think of a certain thing in its literally opposite dimension. How fascinating that would be. We can't even begin to imagine the transformation that we would go through if we allowed ourselves to do that. What if we were taught that this is this, but it can also be that and that and that and that and so many more things? What if we were taught that everything was related? Everything was relative. And what when they say that what you think may not be what you think. That you are not your thoughts and you are not your feelings. May on some degrees then necessarily be true. Because essentially, if even our basic color has been downloaded down to us, has been conditioned on to us, think about a lot of other stuff that has been conditioned upon us, that we really can't think beyond, wherein we are encapsulated in our own boxes, feeling confined in our own boxes and yet not been able to break open that capsule. Try and think of that. What if someday the name that we've been given as our identity, someday we try and disassociate ourselves with that name. What if someday we are able to take our name and just as a random experience not identify with the name that we have been given, that has been downloaded into us, that we've been conditioned to associate with. What if we can detach from that name that has been given to us? What if someday somebody calls us and we don't associate with that name we don't recognize ourselves with that name. How would that feel? Can we truly think of that? Maybe no. Maybe it's too difficult. Because it's a program that has been so inbuilt. 
that it's kind of difficult to disassociate from all of the programmings. But wouldn't that be fantastic to kind of even venture into our programmings to be able to see that we are all programmed at the end of the day? And what if we try and unprogram ourselves, even for moments in our lives, as the extension of life itself? Wouldn't that be liberating? Wouldn't that be fascinating? Wouldn't that be truly transformational? Try and think about what all have you been conditioned into believing about your reality. Try and think if your reality is not a part of your conditioning. Try and think if you are an original thinker, not a part of this matrix. Maybe that starts the process of the evolution of life. Let's try and do that and I will see you once again next week. Till then, stay tuned in.